أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم والحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على سيدنا ونبينا محمد وأهل بيته الطيبين الطاهرين اللهم صل على محمد وآل محمد بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم ربنا اغفر لنا ولإخواننا الذين سبقونا بالإيمان ولا تجعل في قلوبنا غلا للذين آمنوا ربنا إنك غفور رحيم My dear viewers wherever you are السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته A human being by nature is a societal living thing It cannot live and survive and thrive in isolation It will vanish if it lives in isolation. It is important that human being receive love and feel embraced by others. That's why he is a societal living thing. This is the makeup of a human being. This is the nature of a human being. Being integrated into society, being loved and cherished and loving and cherishing other is an integral component of any human being. Showing resentment toward others and being against others always will be troublesome. Human being has multi dimensions. The personality of a human being has multi dimensions. One aspect is the physical body where it has physical amenities also it has the intellectual need where should be catering with intellectual thoughts and thinking and also it has emotional and feelings that needs to be fulfilled and satisfied if we deprive a few human being from these emotions he will have an imbalanced life his life will be disturbed today when you look at the statistics and studies you see those juvenile inmates who spend their lives in a prisons you see that they have been deprived from loving and cherish of the elders of the parents in their families therefore that aspect is very important unfortunately many people sacrifice this to the latter to the two previous conditions they always care about their physical need or some care about their intellectual need they study they feed into their brains but when it comes to emotion and feeling not so many people cater toward others because as I have said the one who lacks this quality who also shows resentment toward others will have an imbalanced life someone who has a blacklist of individuals versus someone who has very immaculate and peaceful soul and friendly toward others if you compare the two you see the former one has a very disturbing life compared to the peaceful one of the second one why because the second one has come into peace with himself and with others can feel others and others can feel him he can see the pain of others and others can feel his pains the Almighty Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala considered this a prime condition for success and admonish us that we ask him to cleanse our hearts from any animosity and hatred toward others as the ayah says رَبَّنَا اغْفِرْ لَنَا وَلِإِخْوَانِنَا الَّذِينَ سَبَقُونَا فِي الْإِيمَانِ وَلَا تَجْعَلْ فِي قُلُوبِنَا غِلًّا لِلَّذِينَ آمَنُوا 
do not fill our hearts with hatred, with animosity, with tension toward the believers. Why? Because a believer should lead a successful life in this life, should have a peaceful life in this life. If he cannot manage to have a peaceful relationship with others, then his life will be imbalanced. In fact, the Almighty make it a prelude, a condition to get into the paradise, is to cleansing our hearts from any hatred and animosity toward others. If someone has a tiny residual amount of animosity and hatred toward others, he should wait until he's completely cleansed and become immaculate, then he will be permitted into the heavens. As the ayah says, وَنَزَعْنَا مَا فِي صُدُورِهِمْ مِنْ غِلٍ إِخْوَانًا عَلَى سُرُورٍ مُتَقَابِلِينَ We have taken away any hatred, any animosity between them, then they were allowed to get into heavens. Therefore, it's a prelude. It's a condition for our entrance in the paradise. Is that our hearts should be cleaned, should be cleansed from any tension, from any bitterness and bad feeling toward others. Al-Imam al-Sadiq alayhi salam says, لا يقبل الله من مؤمن عملا وهو مضمر على أخيه سوءا God would not accept any good deed from someone who has in his heart, inside of his heart, any animosity and bitterness toward his brother. God would not accept any of his deeds. The question, do we really or should we really care about the feelings of others toward us, whether they love us and admire us. Some people say the important thing is God's satisfaction. As long as God is happy with us, in satisfaction with our need, then we care less whether others like us or not, whether they become admirers of us or not, whether they have a good feeling toward us or not. Although the previous statement is correct and necessary that we earn God's satisfaction and pleasing, yet it is not sufficient. Not sufficient because we still need to earn the love and care and admiration of others. In fact, admiration and love of others is a precondition for earning God's satisfaction. How God becomes satisfied about us and satisfied with us is when we do well with others, not only by performing prayers and observing fastings, is the dealing that is important in the viewpoint of the Almighty. He would like us how we handle ourselves with others. If we earn their respect and love and admiration, God also will be satisfied with us. In fact, earning the love and admiration of others is something that God asks us to pray for him for that. Look at the great prophet Ibrahim alayhi salam. He says, رَبَّنَا إِنِّي أَسْكَنْتُ مِنْ ذُرِّيَّتِي بِوَادٍ غَيْرِ ذِي زَرَعَ in the Bayt al-Muharram. I brought my family in this barren life, in this barren land, in the middle of the de desert. Eventually, what I want from you, O God, is that فَجْعَلْ أَفْئِدَةً مِنَ النَّاسِ تَهْوِي إِلَيْهِمْ Make some hearts fall for them, fall in love with them, feel for them, show them sympathy and admiration. This is the call of the great prophet Ibrahim alayhi salam. In another ayah, 
the Almighty promises those believers who do good, who do the righteous things, God would say and promise them he would make them admired and loved by others. It says, إِنَّ الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا وَعَمِلُوا الصَّالِحَاتِ سَيَجْعَلُوا لَهُمُ الرَّحْمَانُ وُدَّا Therefore, we need to gain the love and affection and admiration of others because that become a success in our life. If we want to calibrate and find out how much successful we are in this life, see how much, how many admirers and respecting individuals we have. The Almighty reminds his prophet, tells him that one important factor or probably the most important factor that you have in your success, you became successful, is the fact that you were lenient with your followers they loved you they cherished you that's why they stayed with you فَبِمَا رَحْمَةٍ مِّنَ اللَّهِ لِنْتَ لَهُمْ وَلَوْ كُنْتَ فَضًّا غَلِيظَ الْقَلْبِ لَنْفَضُّ مِنْ حَوْلِكِ الإمام الصادق عليه السلام says حَبِّبُوا إِلَى حَبِّبُونَا إِلَى النَّاسِ وَحَبِّبُوا النَّاسَ إِلَيْنَا وَلَا تُبَغْضُونَا إِلَيْهِمْ make people love us make people become our admirers and don't make us to be in their eyes very pugnacious don't make them resentful of Ahlul Bayt the question is how how should we make people to admire Ahlul Bayt to admire Al Imam Al Sadiq alayhi salam one prime condition of brothers and sisters is our conduct if we present a good conduct to others where we represent Ahl al-Bayt people would admire us. Why? Because people's eyes are their judges. People judge with their eyes. Part of any assessment for any religion is what the followers of that religion do. People take us on our face value. If we do good, if we behave, if we handle ourselves correctly, people take us cordially and believe that our faith and our religion is good. And God forbid, if we misbehave, if we do not conduct ourselves well, people naturally feel that our religion is an evil religion, is a bad religion. Why? Because people's assessment is through our action. They take us on our face values. Therefore, we should be careful when we handle ourselves. Look at the Imam alayhi salam. He says that, Kunu du'ata lana bighayri al-sinatikum. Be our ambassadors, but not with your tongue, rather with your deed. There is a beautiful verse in the Holy Quran where it says, Rabbana la taj'alna fitnatan lilladheena kafaru. Do not make us a trial by which the kafirs will fail. What does it mean? It means that maybe there is an opportunity for a non-Muslim, for someone who do not share us our ideology, to embrace our faith and religion. But since he looked at us and is not happy and not pleased with the way we handle ourselves, he missed this opportunity. Therefore, we become a cause for him to turn away from Islam. Therefore, the ayah says, do not be such a person as a fitna, as a failing test for others. When others, based on your actions, judge Islam and turn away from Islam or from following Ahl al-Bayt, Al-Imam Sadiq salam says, إِنَّ الرَّجُلَ مِنْكُمْ إِذَا صَدُقَ فِي حَدِيثِهِ وَوَرِعَ فِي دِينِهِ وَأَدَّ الْأَمَانَةِ وَحَسُنَ خُلُقُهُ فِي النَّاسِ If this man, number one, telling the truth, said it, second, be sincere in his faith and religion, 
A trustful. He returns the trust to people. Very nice demeanor. Very kind gestures if he has. They say that this is the teaching of Ja'far ibn Muhammad. وَإِنْ كَانَ عَلَىٰ خِلَافِ ذَلِكْ فَإِنَّهُ يُصِيبُنَا عَارُهُ If we are just the opposite of that, then the shame and embarrassment again will go to our imams. Therefore, we should make sure that we become good followers by our demeanor. اللهم إني أسألك باسمك يا مسهل يا مفصل يا مبدل يا مذلل يا منزل يا منوّل يا مفضل يا مجزل يا ممهل يا مجمل سبحانك يا لا إله إلا أنت الغوث الغوث خلصنا من النار يا رب يا من يرى ولا يرى يا من يخلق ولا يخلق يا من يهدي ولا يهدى يا من يحيي ولا يحيى يا من يسأل ولا يسأل يا من يطعم ولا يطعم يا من يجير ولا يجار عليه يا من يقضي ولا يقضى عليه يا من يحكم ولا يحكم عليه يا من لم يلد ولم يولد ولم يكن له كفوا أحد سبحانك يا لا إله إلا أنت الغوث الغوث خلصنا من النار يا رب يا نعم الحسيب يا نعم الطبيب يا نعم الرقيب يا نعم القريب يا نعم المجيب يا نعم الحبيب يا نعم الكفيل يا نعم الوكيل يا نعم المولى يا نعم النصير سبحانك يا لا إله إلا أنت الغوث الغوث خلصنا من النار يا رب With segments number 49, 50, and 51 of Dua Joshan Al Kabir. Segment number 41, 49, the theme is to cure heart's ailment. And it goes as Allahumma inni as'aluka bismika ya musahilu, ya mufassilu, ya mubaddil, ya muzalilu, ya munazilu, ya munawil, ya mufdilu, ya mujzilu. Ya Mumhilu, Ya Mujmil. The translation 
O Allah, verily I entreat thee in thy name, O facilitator, O separator, alterer, uh, alterer, humiliator of the proud, degrader, benefactor, munificent, giver of respite, O virtuous. There are a couple vocabularies that I would like to stop, pause on, and explain a little bit. One of them says, Ya musahilu, ya mufassilu, ya mubaddil. The name of God is the alterer, the one that alter things, changes things. There is an elegant verse in the Holy Quran that says that the earth can be changed, can be altered. يَوْمَ تُبَدَّلُ الْأَرْضُ غَيْرَ الْأَرْضُ وَالسَّمَاوَاتُ بَرَزُوا وَالسَّمَاوَاتُ وَبَرَزُوا لِلَّهِ الْوَاحِدِ الْقَهَارِ That both the heavens and earth both have been altered and both have come in exposure as servient, subservient to the Almighty. Meaning, on that day, on the day of judgment, on the hereafter, we will be walking on the planet. But the planet is a different planet, something that has changed. It is not as it used to be. The entire planet, the entire skies, and the entire heavens have changed. No longer it is the universe that we live in. What does that mean? There is another ayah that gives a little hint to this, where it says, وَمَا قَدَرُ اللَّهَ حَقَّ قَدْرِهِ وَالْأَرْضُ جَمِيعًا قَبْلَتُهُ يَوْمَ الْقِيَامَةِ وَالسَّمَاوَاتُ مَطْوِيَّاتٌ بِيَمِينَةِ It says that on the day of judgment, the entire earth, the planet earth, it's in his grasp, while the heavens, the skies, are all rolled into like a closed file, a closed notebook, rolled into his hand again. When we put those two things, we realize that there is some change in the form of this universe. The universe that we live in is no more will be existent on the day of the judgment. Rather, a new universe will be coming. Now, when you go back to the scientist, and again, this is mere speculation. We're just talking about the beauty of this word, yubaddil, tabdil, changing. Therefore, going back again, the scientist would say how the universe has started, as we have talked about it previously. We talked about the Big Bang theory and the model where the scientists put forward on how the universe was formed by a big expansion from a very tiny, little, dense and superheated dot. All of, us, all of a sudden, this universe was expanded. In the same way that it started this way, it implodes and come back again to that tiny, little dot completely vanishes. This is how the universe will come to end according to the speculations of scientists. Do they have an idea, an evidence of that? Yes, they do. They call the phenomena of the black holes. There are black holes in the galaxies, which are spaces, which are regions in the galaxy and in the space that have very, very strong gravitational force. Any objects, even light, if get it through the black, black hole, cannot come back from that. Everything will be totally sucked in inside the heart of this black hole. The entire planets, stars, constellations, and even galaxies can disappear, can vanish once they get into this black hole. They implode. This black hole 
its tiny resemblance of the day of judgment, where everything can be imploded and coming back to its tiny origin. Then from that, God would expand another universe, which it is earth, but not the earth and not the heavens that we look through. This is segment number 49. Segment number 50, the theme is to improve eyesight, where it says, Ya man yara wa la yura, ya man yakhluqu wa la yukhluq, ya man yehdi wa la yuhda, ya man yuhyi wa la yuhya, ya man yas'alu wa la yus'al, ya man yat'amu wa la yut'am, ya man yujiru wa la yujaru alayhi, ya man yakdhi, ya man yakdhi wa la yukdha alayhi, ya man yahkumu wa la yuhkamu alayhi, ya man lam yalid wa lam yulad, وَلَمْ يَكُلْ لَهُ كُفُوًا أَحَدٌ He who sees but not be seen. He who creates and not created. He who guides and not guided. Who he receives to life and is not brought to life. He who questions and is not being questioned. He who feeds and does not eat. These are again some attributes of the Almighty. We stopped at this notion, Ya man yara wa la yara. God see us, but he cannot be seen. Now all Islamic sects and divisions say that the Almighty cannot be seen in this world. However, the majority of Muslims who are not the followers of Ahl al-Bayt, they go after the school of Asha'ira who say that God can be seen in the hereafter. He will reveal himself to the believers in the paradise. Now, why would they say this? They come to two points. They say, number one is that there is an incident where Musa, the great prophet of Allah, has asked to see God, where it says, Rabbi arini anburu ilayk. قال لن تراني ولكن انظر إلى الجبل فإن استقر مكانه فسوف تراني You would not be able to see me but look at the mountain Once the mountain settles you will be seeing me So Musa the great prophet is asking to see the Lord If there is no possibility he would not ask Second they allude to another verse where it says these are faces on the hereafter that they look at their Lord. Therefore, there is a possibility that we see our Lords in the hereafter. This is the notion of the followers of the school of Sahaba. But the followers of Ahl al-Bayt and Ahl al-Bayt they reject this notion. They, they say that either in this life or in the hereafter, it is impossible to see the Lord. There is an explicit ayah where it says, لا تدرك الأبصار وهو يدرك الأبصار وهو اللطيف الخبير. Eyes cannot catch him, whether in this life or in the hereafter. And then they explain those two verses. Number one, they say that when Musa have asked this, it was not him asking, rather he was conveying the demand of his followers, Bani Israel, who were adamant about seeing God. In fact, they said, We would not believe in you, Moses, if we do not see God in eye contact. Therefore, he was conveying their message when he said that, O oh God, present to them, because he knew that God would not be seen. Because at the end of the verse, he says, أَفَتُهْلِكُنَا بِمَا فَعَلَ السَّفَهَاءُ مِنَّا Oh God, you punish us because of some silly individuals who have asked improper question. So the question didn't belong to him. Rather, he was conveying the message of his ignorant followers. And second, those that they say, people will see the Almighty in the hereafter. Our scholars, 
they say that they are looking for the mercy of God, not him. They are looking at what God has wrought them. This is the segment number 50, 50 and then segment number 51 that um, in the, in the um, dua Joshan al-Kabir, which has a theme which is to dispel mischief of the enemy, it says, Ya Na'ma al-Habib, Ya Na'ma al-Tabib, Ya Na'ma al-Raqib, Ya Na'ma al-Qareeb, Ya Na'ma al-Mujib, Ya Na'ma al-Habib, Ya Na'ma al-Kafil, Ya Na'ma al-Wakil, Ya Na'ma al-Mawla, Ya Na'ma al-Nasir. O oh, the best reckoner, the best physician or healer, the best guardian, the best near one, best respondent, best friend, best surety, best protector. God is the best of all operators. God is the best of every best. We stop at this word, Ya Ma'na Tabib the best healer, the best physician. How he become the best healer? The scholars say two. One, in the outcome, meaning the action that he does, he gives healing that no other doctor, no other medicine can give. Imagine when you have a cut in your skin and you are, ha you, and you are having a bleeding, how does the blood stop? If the blood doesn't stop bleeding, if you had a very deep cut, blood keep going, flowing, and flowing. If it's left like this, we may die. So how does blood stop? Is when it has a clotting. The blood has a clot. Who has made this? It is the Almighty. Without going to any medical doctor, or to any hospital, the bleeding will come to an end when the blood clots. Very simple with a minor procedure. It will be over with. This is the action. God is the best in performance, also best in intention. Why would a physician or a doctor help others, cure others? Either to make a living, which is a very legitimate, he wants to make a living by helping others to heal or sometimes for his reasoning because he wants to acquire rewards or he wants to acquire a praise. So his action is always subject to an interest or to something that he keeps in the future he will earn, whether it's an, an, a thawab, a reward in the hereafter or earning in this life, or praise of others. But the Almighty, when He heals people, for what reason? Does He want any reward from them? Does He want any praise from him, them? No, He does that because He loves us. For the fact, He is the most merciful, the most beneficent. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Sometimes a person feels joyful about a thing which he was not to miss in any case and feels grieved for a thing which was not to come to him at all. Therefore, you should not regard the attainment of pleasure and the satisfaction of the desire for revenge as the best favor of this world, but it should be the putting off of the flame of wrong and the revival of right. Your pleasure should be for what good acts you have sent forward. Your grief should be for what you are leaving behind. And your worry should be about what is to befall after death.